Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome back to Depictions Media Radio. I am Michael, and we have um, an update coming from Rob Fleming around the highways and travel well, essential travel um, across BC, and he is asking that if you you're not traveling um, for the transport of goods or things to help other communities, that you simply don't travel at all. In one instance, he advised a camera team who was trying to shoot a movie not to use the roads roads to bring their their equipment and their personnel. Um, to locations that they should actually find other means of transportation to get their equipment and personnel to uh, the appropriate place for the, for the site that they're shooting at. Um, moreover, um, there's a list here of Highway 16 into Prince George to Terrace. There's going to be some closures and delays according to what, what I'm, about to re- I'm reading off this list. Um, and uh, Highway 97 uh, from Bear Lake to Highway 29. There's going to be some delays uh, in those areas also. Um, as Rob Fleming is going to tell you also, is like the best thing, best thing to do if you plan on traveling, find out if your route uh, appears on Drive BC and decide from there. Um, the odds are if you're traveling from the lower mainland trying to get into the interior or up north that it's probably best that you that you stay home. So with that, let's listen to what Rob Fleming actually has to say in this uh, press release. Good morning. I'm grateful to be joining you from the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Uh, Today, Minister Farnworth is in uh, First Nations and local government uh, communities uh, around the Merritt area. Uh, I would like to uh, start uh, with an update uh, from Minister Farnworth in Emergency Management BC uh, by noting that there there is a strong winter storm expected to affect many parts of BC this weekend. I would remind uh, people in every part of the province that if you need to travel, be prepared for stormy weather. The storm is expected to be especially severe in the Highway 3 area. We have put out a public advisory about that this morning, and we have communicated directly uh, with the trucking industry. People traveling for essential reasons on Highway 3 this weekend need to be prepared for the incoming weather system. They need to continue to slow down, to be patient, and to drive to the conditions. We've been through a lot uh, these past weeks as British Columbians. Uh, Governments at all levels uh, will continue to provide uh, people with critical support at this time. The process of recovery and rebuilding is underway, and while it will take time, we will get there. Our government stands ready to support everyone who has been impacted by these devastating floods. Donations have been pouring in and continue to pour in through the Red Cross, which our government and the federal government Uh, continue to uh, match uh, contributions to. I'm advised that $10.8 million has already been dispersed to evacuees through a variety of means, including the $2,000 payments announced by the province. I want to say thank you once again to all the frontline workers and volunteers who have been engaged in tireless efforts to respond and to recover from these storms. While the recovery phase is just beginning and there's still a lot to do to get people back into their homes, we are cautiously optimistic that we are now through the worst of it. On transportation-related matters, I'll start today's briefing with an update on conditions in the Lower Mainland. On the two primary east-west corridors, traffic has moved well since the since we lifted the essential travel restrictions on Highway 7 uh, this Monday afternoon. A majority of the commercial vehicles that had been using Highway 7 have switched over to Highway 1 uh, since it reopened last week. On Tuesday, we were able to reopen the two eastbound lanes at Popcom, just east of Chilliwack, improving uh, flow on the corridor even further. Having uh, regular east-west traffic on highways 1 and 7 
along with the restoration of Highway 11 north to south all the way to the U.S. border, is greatly improving mobility in the region. And I want to thank people for their patience and their understanding as we've worked to repair and reopen these damaged highways. Let me now move to the interior. Um, I want to uh, direct people's attention to how hard crews have been working to get the Coquihalla open. I think on previous updates I've mentioned that we have 100 pieces of heavy equipment working to repair the Coquihalla. Hundreds of workers have been involved in efforts to stabilize and repair Highway 5. We're throwing everything we have at it because we know how important it is to connect the lower mainland with the interior. And I'm pleased to say, because of the skill of our contractors, workers, uh, and the round-the-clock efforts that they've been making, we're making tremendous progress. I have previously reported that the Coquihalla was on track to reopen for commercial traffic by the end of January, but based on the exceptional progress to date and if favorable weather continues to allow us to maintain this pace, we are confident that it could instead reopen in early January. This is remarkable. Given the scale of damage on the Coquihalla, and it's a testament to the skill and dedication of everybody who is part of this tremendous effort. As well uh, as regards to Highway 1 through the Fraser Canyon, it continues to be on track to reopen in mid-January. Until the Coquihalla can reopen to commercial traffic, though, with temporary repairs, we must leave Highway 3 available primarily for semi-trailer trucks moving essential goods. With upwards of about 3,000 trucks a day now on that highway, with its steep grades and tight curves, it would be dangerous to mix leisure, leisure passenger traffic in with convoys of trucks. Uh, further, Highway 99 between Pemberton and Lillooet presents its own unique challenges with very steep grades, very tight corners, and very narrow stretches, and that's why Highway 99 between Pemberton and Lillooet will continue to be restricted to essential vehicles no larger than a cube truck. Safety is always going to be our number one concern, both before the storms and especially after, now that we are recovering from significant damage to our infrastructure. We know, especially in a year like this one, people want to see their loved ones this holiday season, and we're doing what we can to support you. My colleague, Minister Melanie Mark, and her ministry staff <clears throat> have been working with companies and airlines on alternative avenues for safe travel for the holiday season. Airlines have come to the table to get people to where they need to go without impacting traffic levels on our roadways. And an increase in air travel options will be coming online as airlines work to increase their capacity from Vancouver and Abbotsford airports into the interior. We will also be updating the essential travel order for Highway 3 to include inner city bus services. There are options for travel by bus transportation from the Lower Mainland to Kelowna and Kamloops through companies like eBus. Rider Express and Mountain Man Mike bus service. Once again, uh, until we get the Coquihalla reopened uh, for commercial trucks, we can look at making Highway 3 and possibly high, Highway 99 available after the Coquihalla is restored and designated for commercial vehicles. Again, I'd like to thank the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture and Sport, Destination BC, and the transportation partners we have who've come together to find safe and accept, uh, accessible solutions for holiday travel, there will be more information uh, pending on what those options look like. But again, I want to thank everybody in the province for their patience as we work to ensure the safety of our highway system for all those who need to use them, and I would thank you. Thank you very much. A reminder to media on the line, please press star 1 to enter the queue. You will be limited to one question and one follow-up. Of course, we are well represented with four different technical experts on the line from the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change Canada, the River Forecast Centre, and two bar representatives from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. Our first question today goes to Val Peary, CBC. Uh, Minister, we've heard from a film and TV production company owner that you know his work is considered non-essential, so he can't drive on Highway 3 or 99, and he's paying thousands of dollars to fly his team and equipment from Squamish to Kelowna, and he's... Uh, he'd like to see the essential travel restrictions loosened for people traveling for work. Is that something that you'll consider doing and possibly when? Uh, is he right that film and TV work not related to flood coverage is not essential? It's very difficult once you got, start to get into exemptions because everybody will think that they have a category. And uh, while I would encourage uh, this production company to look at other alternative avenues to 
uh, keep their production going uh, and would beg their understanding. Uh, highway 99 is a difficult highway right now, and uh, that stretch between Pemberton and, and Lillooet is under essential travel orders. It will remain so, as I've just mentioned, uh, and um, and that is because we want that gentleman's company and his crew and his workers to be safe and everybody using a very distressed, damaged highway to be safe. Bell, do you have a follow-up? Yes, please. Um, Minister, could you um, possibly break down what extra maintenance is now being done along the passable routes, like Highway 99 and 3, to keep traffic moving? You know, I have snow-clearing crews been shifted over from closed routes. Uh, how many more police officers are on those open routes? Thank you. Uh, appreciate the question. It's uh, On Highway 3, we have extra RCMP enforcement as well as uh, the Commercial Vehicle Safety Enforcement Team, CVSE, uh, patrolling those routes, uh, enhanced capacity there. Our uh, road maintenance contractors in terms of de-icing, salting the roads, um, are on uh, uh, an extra uh, enhanced schedule. Um, we do have um, repairs going on while the highways are open, so there's lots of cone zones, work, heavy equipment uh, on Highway 3, on Highway 99. Uh, and other areas that have sustained damage. Um, there will be crews working on Highway 11 and other other areas that are now reopened uh, that are also damaged. So it's a reminder to go slow, uh, to respect the traffic management systems that are in place. These are human beings that are flagging traffic, directing them on uh, reduced speed limits. Uh, and I can't stress enough, uh, along with the BC Trucking Association and trucking companies, that lowering your speed and driving to conditions saves lives. Uh, we've had fatalities on Highway 3, for example. Um, we want to have a, a zero accident, zero fatality system going forward uh, on all our highways, but the ones that are damaged that need to be, um, where drivers need to be extra, extra mindful to the condition of the highways and the condition of the weather and the storm that I've just updated uh, the public on, um, these are all factors that need to be considered uh, for our truck drivers and for others uh, participating in essential travel. Next question, Shannon Patterson, CTV. Well, hi, Minister. So just to be clear, because I'm hearing from some people that they're, they're taking a wait-and-see approach about whether they think they can drive to visit family members in the Okanagan or vice versa. Would you advise people that um, that will not be an option for Christmas or the entire Christmas break? People should not plan on driving from Vancouver to Kelowna or from Kamloops to Vancouver. That, 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 that's just not going to happen. Yeah, I would, I would advise leisure travel to not happen. Um, as I mentioned, intercity bus Coaches will be operating on Highway 3, are operating on Highway 3. Um, the airline industry will have updates. Uh, there's a significant amount of shifting of resources to add regional flights. There's a number of airlines that are adding service to Kamloops and Kelowna. Air Canada has uh, also uh, had a regional response to get extra aircraft servicing those airports. They brought in a price cap on their product. Um, and, uh, and we appreciate that. But there are a number of carriers that are also... Uh, uh, looking at uh, adding flights, so those things are going to be updated online. Destination Marketing BC is working with the tourism industry to advertise those opportunities. So, um, you know, the, the United States, I would caution because we know that with Omicron, um, you know, there could be different uh, restrictions on COVID testing and those sorts of things that are subject to change. But, uh, you know, the United States is an option as of today for some travel. Um, but uh, you know this is this this is difficult. Having lost our highways, having having to try and keep supply chains active, um, I can't tell you how important it is uh, for you know the holiday season for workers and their families and communities around BC. Because if we didn't have parts and machinery and uh, essential items that are part of the supply chain, businesses would have to curtail production. They'd have to shut down, and we'd have people laid off for Christmas. And that would be the worst possible thing. Instead. We have 15,000 trucks that have made it through Highway 3 and through northern Washington. We're keeping store shelves full. We're keeping people employed. Uh, and we're trying to uh, work our way back day by day to, uh, to getting to normal. Shannon, do you have a follow-up? Okay, just to clarify, if the Coquihalla were to reopen in early January, it would be commercial traffic only. Is that when you think it might 
return to non-essential travel allowed on Highway 3? And would people then, say through the ski season, when you look at Sun Peaks or Silver Star or um, Big White, would people then be expected through much of the winter and into the spring that if they were to go to the Okanagan or the interior, that they wouldn't be on the Coquihalla for a leisure trip, they would be on Highway 3? Correct. Yeah, that's the plan going forward is to reopen Highway 5 uh, as an essential corridor for uh, commercial trucks and, uh, and, and open the number three for general travel. Um, we'd probably have Highway 3, uh, continue to have additional patrol, continue to have uh, a signage and uh, you know, significant travel advisories because we want people to drive to condition when passenger vehicles are allowed back on the number three, but that's the plan going forward is to reopen the five to allow the three for uh, other forms of travel. Next question, Keith Baldry, Global News. Yeah, Minister, in terms of the Coquihalla reopening, what are we looking at? Is there going to be single lane each way, alternating lanes? Uh, surely it's not going to be uh, two lanes on either direction. Uh, we're trying to engineer uh, exactly that, but we're going to have to provide us a, a separate update on, on the Coquihalla. Uh, what I know is that there's been remarkable progress on rebuilding the Coquihalla to allow it to reopen. As I mentioned today, um, you know, a late January timeline that we felt confident about a couple of weeks ago, based on the progress we're seeing, we're now projecting that for early January, uh, which is which is good news. I will be looking at the Coquihalla myself firsthand tomorrow with Minister Al Gabra from the federal government. Um, their assistance has been invaluable. Railways, um, TMX, everybody working on the same access routes, uh, lending each other a hand has been part of this massive effort to. Uh, significantly um, advance a schedule for reusing, being able to use the Coquihalla Highway, which I think is tremendous, but we'll have more to say about that, um, specifically what the, the traffic management will look like and how many lanes uh, in the days ahead. Please, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, in terms of what's being done on the Coke right now, are we, are we looking at <coughs> what's being done as, as repairs or is it a permanent fix? Or does more work have to be done once the repairs are made? No, this is this is temporary repairs to to get it to you know usable condition. It won't be the same Coquihalla. Um, you know the, the the build back better discussion that we're having with the federal government and, and other partners. Um, we don't have a timeline for that yet, but we have taken some steps very quickly to uh, test the market to see what kind of interest there is in rebuilding a, a, a climate resilient uh, Coquihalla to restore it permanently. Don't have a timeline on when that would be, but we do have um, contractors, companies, design firms uh, pre-qualifying uh, to serve the people of British Columbia and work with the province of British Columbia to do that. Next question, Jeff Bell, Times Colonist. Oh, hi. I just wanted to, to check to see if there's any update on the uh, Malahat and how things are going there. Well, that's been good uh, since uh, we had uh, overnight closures um, and were able to, um, you know, clear debris and restore lanes. We had a period of single lane alternating traffic. Now we have traffic in both directions. Uh, there's no more evening closures. Uh, the road is, is, is holding up to, um, to traffic. I think volumes are lower than usual, which is probably a good thing, too, in terms of congestion relief. It's just... Uh, people taking the opportunity, working with their employers to work at home. and uh, uh, But in terms of that connect connectivity between the south of Vancouver Island to the mid and North Island, uh, the Malahat Highway 1 throughout the island. Jeff, do you have a follow-up? Uh, no. Thank you very much. We have one more question. Time for one more question. Nelson Bennett, Business in Vancouver. Please go ahead. Yes, I was just wondering if we have even a ballpark figure yet on the, the cost of doing all the repairs to all, all the highways, including Coquihalla and Highway 1. Do we have even a ballpark figure yet? No, we don't. Um, and it's because engineering assessments and different options that we may pursue um, have not been costed. Really what we're focusing on is what is possible, what is the best course forward. You know, there may be different solutions on Highway 8 and Highway 1 in the Fraser Canyon uh, because stretches of that highway will need to be uh, replaced in a different area than where it was originally. Now that the embankments and the direction of the river has changed, all those sorts of things need to be taken into account. 
don't have a cost on the Coquihalla. Um, what I can say, though, is that we've been sparing zero resources. Uh, we've been rushing into action to get uh, crews, equipment, and material uh, to make emergency repairs so that we can open it temporarily. The long-term fix, and, and we hope to have that done as expeditiously as possible, we'll have to update you on timelines and costs at a later, t at a later date. Do you have a follow-up, Nelson? Yes, please. I'm just wondering, is it possible that even next summer during the tourism season that the Coca Hall still might not be open to leisure travel or, or non-essential travel? We're going to have to see what supply chains look like. Um, I'm very pleased to hear the Port of Vancouver and CP and CN Rail um, talking about how they're getting at some of the supply chain backlogs, the um, you know, the, the, the number of freighters in Anchorage, bulk carriers, um, containers that are getting uh, to other parts of BC and uh, linking the national economic supply chain of the country. So uh, obviously they were put behind significantly by the storm events, but they've been running successfully in some cases for weeks now and, and many, many days in the case of, uh, of uh, a CN. And um, this has been tremendous. Uh, the flexibility shown by CBSA and uh, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol to have a, a, an express route, if you like, exemptions for truckers to get through northern Washington and back into the, tier, into the interior has been invaluable and working with the trucking industry on making Highway 3 as functional as it can be and handle a, an increased volume during winter road conditions has been tremendous. So we're, as I said, we're getting back to normal day by day infrastructure is being repaired. There's some big jobs that remain ahead for sure. Uh, but the, um, the work that's being done to restore, for example, the number five is going to be tremendously valuable to increase uh, options for uh, the traveling public uh, in the weeks ahead. Thank you very much, everyone. That concludes today's operational update. Thank you for listening today, and thank you for supporting us with our sponsors. Please go to depictions.media for more information and click on our contact link and let us know how we can help, how we can help bring your story and help bring us to a better world. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.